Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. The search is over for a Sioux Falls teenager accused of shooting at an apartment building with people inside, but he won't be staying behind bars. 18-year-old Damien Westra is accused of shooting at two apartments at the beginning of the month. Police found bullet holes, but no one was hurt. Authorities issued an arrest warrant the 13th and made an arrest on Tuesday. According to court documents, Westra is affiliated with a gang, and the shooting may have been connected to another gang member who used to live at the apartment. Westra faces several charges, including firing a gun at a building and aggravated assault. He's being released from jail on a PR bond. A 33-year-old Sioux Falls man is behind bars this morning following a standoff with police. Tuesday afternoon, two officers went to a home looking for a parole absconder. Police say the man inside the house said he had a weapon and threatened the officers. He then barricaded himself in the basement. Both SWAT and negotiators were called out. The man surrendered several hours later. Kenneth Williams Sr. is charged with aggravated assault on law enforcement, threatening law enforcement, resisting arrest, and a parole violation. Authorities have identified the victim in the Tuesday morning gyrocopter crash near Yankton as 65-year-old Kevin Ream of California. Investigators with the NTSB arrived at the crash site Wednesday morning and documented the site. They say the wreckage was to be removed yesterday. They are still investigating exactly what happened, but a spokesperson with the NTSB says, shortly, says the aircraft crashed shortly after takeoff and that there was significant fire after the crash. They are investigating along with the FAA. What we're doing in these first couple of days is uh, working on, you know, doc documenting the accident site and establishing the facts and the circumstances of the accident. The investigator will then write up a uh, preliminary report, and once that's reviewed and approved, it will be posted on our website. That usually takes two to three weeks. That'll be the first report we issue. Um, the complete investigation to get to probable cause and any contributing factors, that generally takes anywhere from 12 to 24 months in a fatal general aviation accident like this one. Knudsen says they're looking at the history of the aircraft, maintenance records, certifications, and what the pilot did in the 72 hours leading up to the crash in case there is anything that could have affected his ability to safely operate the aircraft. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. A little more wind out there today, Scott. Oh, southerly winds are ready this morning. Temperatures are warmer than what we had this time yesterday with uh, numbers mainly in the 40s, 50s, and even a couple of 60s showing in central and south central South Dakota. Temperatures will be well above average with that strong southerly wind. Expect highs in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. More details on your forecast with Brian coming up. Thank you, Scott. Ian has been downgraded to a tropical storm as it makes its way inland in Florida. And one South Dakota mom is nervously watching it closely because her 21-year-old daughter is staying in Orlando. Shayla Rost is an intern for the Disney College program. She's been preparing for the hurricane by stocking up on food and water. Nervous and distrusting Disney that they've done this before. They, you know, know what to expect and they're taking care of the kids. Zip through it. And uh, the hurricane now a tropical storm and located east of Orlando. Farmers will be seeing some relief following the May 12th derecho. Earlier this week, the USDA announced it will be providing $20 million cost share disaster assistance to help ag producers in South Dakota, Minnesota and Kentucky rebuild grain storage structures damaged by storms this year. While $20 million is far from covering all the damage farmers have seen, they are still happy to see some support from the organization. I think this is a surprise for most farmers, and it's, I think, uh, a good story to tell that uh, USDA um, does value uh, grain storage and knows that the importance it has for food security in this nation. So far, producers don't know a lot about what the program will entail, but they are hoping to learn more from the USDA's Farm Service Agency within the next month. Six members of AmeriCorps are helping clean up Leif Erikson Day Camp in Sioux Falls. 22-year-old Gage Martinez is spending 10 months traveling from state to state volunteering his time to be part of the Domestic Peace Corps. It provides an experience that you really can't get anywhere else, especially at your age. Living with the team, traveling across the country, getting to see all sorts of different communities. And at least for me, a lot of it is in the service, is that I wanted to help people, and this is a really unique opportunity to do so. 
The volunteers will spend another two weeks in Sioux Falls before moving on to their next project in Bemidji, Minnesota. 1,400 bison at Custer State Park are being rounded up this week. The annual Buffalo Roundup is in its 57th year, and each fall the event brings in tens of thousands of visitors. There will be about 60 riders participating. One of, one of the things that I love is, is coming, coming to the park and, and seeing everybody who's, who's been here for you know, the last 15 years and, and old acquaintances and, and old friends and get to catch up with everybody. And it's just everybody has a good time and it's just a lot of fun. Gates for the Buffalo Roundup open at 6.15 tomorrow morning. The riders will start rounding up the bison around 9.30. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, not as cool this morning, and we're off to a warm afternoon. We're watching these temperatures getting back into the 80s for much of central South Dakota. A couple of 90s will likely pop up, especially toward Phillip later today. Rapid City not far from 90. Tonight's steady south wind will keep these temperatures up into uh, 50s, I think, for many of us. And then tomorrow morning, as a warm front kicks in, we might spark a couple of isolated light showers. If that develops, probably the northeast would have a little better chance of that. But the air is so dry, it's hard to generate much here. And we're back to the 80s easily in central South Dakota tomorrow. Sioux Falls area probably ends up just a little shy of 80 or an afternoon high. Here's a look at Futurecast, and again, it brings through that warm front. The best chance of rain as we head toward the weekend is going to be in the Black Hills. You can see some rain moving up there from the southwest into the Rapid City area, and eventually a little more rain into parts of North Dakota. We'll see Sioux Falls uh, likely for now kind of holding back on most of the rain chances until perhaps Monday, Tuesday. But even at this point, still speculating on how fast that's going to pull out because of the remnants of EM. Now, what will likely become another hurricane, by the way, as it moves up the east coast a bit. 74 today, Sioux Falls, south wind 20 to 35. Let's take a look at the seven day forecast. We've got highs in the middle to upper 70s for the weekend, and we'll keep the 70s at least through Wednesday of next week. I do see an, another front moving in by about that point. It may start to cool us off a little bit. Aberdeen in the northeast, uh, other than a scattered, very scattered shower chance tomorrow, I would say for the most part it is dry enough in the seven day to leave out any organized rain chances. And Pierre's about the same, although the farther west you go, a little better chance we'll start to see things popping up in our Rapid City forecast Friday night into Saturday, and we could easily see some more of that regenerating during Sunday night into Monday. So check out the details of that weather online at Cuddleland.com.